Next up in the workshop, we paint for the Emperor. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. We are continuing to work on the Games Workshop paint set, uh, which, which gives you a wonderful introduction into the world of painting Warhammer, uh, either Age of Sigmar or Warhammer 40,000. This particular set is the Warhammer 40,000 set. So we are painting up a Ultramarines Space Marine. And as you can see, I have left off the weapon and the backpack, which allows me to get into the small uh, crevices and chest details without having to fight with the other two parts. I mean, uh, excuse me. I mean, if you want, you can paint them. Uh, let's try that even though you see the thing that I hate. Anyway. Um, yeah, it just allows you to, to have a little bit more control and a little bit more freedom over, uh, over what you can do. Now, like I said, you can have everything put together, uh, but then you have to try and paint around and get the, get the paintbrush into those finicky little areas um so if you leave the if you leave the, the spots off or the parts off then uh it's a little bit easier and today we are going to try a little a little something just a little bit different we're going to try a new feature we are going to add just a little bit more light because I can. Also, it brightens up this pretty mug, too. And uh, Dave, I can hear you laughing at that it's com uh, comment already, but it is what it is. All right, so let's continue on what we're, with what we're doing here. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to tidy up. Some of the paint. That we get that we did a little bit of overpaint with. It's not a lot. But what it is is mostly covering over the the bath is our gold that we that I overpainted under the shoulder pads because the next thing the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get it some shade So having the having a clean um, surface, well, tidier surface, clean is not quite the not quite the right word, but.
Like I said, we're just going to tidy things up a little bit. That's all. Nothing. Nothing horrendous. Now we can also go back over and find little parts that we may have that we may have missed. But that doesn't quite have enough coverage, and you can still see the primer coming through. And again, the uh, like I said in the first video, the primer isn't necessarily needed, but it does it does help. Um, giving something for the paint to adhere to which will cause less chipping and less wear See, we, as, as I'm going over, the miniature, I can, see spots that I missed, or don't have enough, uh, enough coverage. That I thought I had, you know, that I thought I'd got, but apparently I did not. That's okay. If the elbow pads have some of the some of the paths are gold on it. Just good to go back and tidy them up. So while we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take the next step, and it's called shading, and it helps bring out the uh, the details and kind of give your uh, model just a little bit more depth and a little bit more character. So the color that we are going to use is my trusted friend, and you know it and I know it. It's not Nolan Oil, but it's Agrax Earthshade. Excuse me. Now, as you can see, oh, it's up here. have an Agrax, the standard size of Agrax or shade compared to the one that you get in the starter set. Right there. What I can do is, but we're going to use my open one. Same thing. You know, and I actually should have been doing that throughout, but that's okay because I have my own Bathazar gold. I 
have my own McCraig blue that are all you know, that are all open and you can see my bath is our my bath is our gold <laughs> is needs to be mixed up so I just went straight for that one instead of wasting the time mixing my old one up so we're gonna take the egg racks we're gonna basically take it straight from the pot put a little on the palette just to give us the little control that we want and we're gonna go over the bath is our gold with it and if you find that you have too much oops. <laughs> if you find that you have too much you can just um, wipe some off the brush and the brush will suck up the then then the brush will suck up the extra Shading's actually really, really fast, and it's a really great way to to bring out uh, extra details. And if you find that it's not enough for you, you can always add a little bit more afterwards and it will just keep darkening it down. There we are. So now we can put that off to the side. Let that dry. And then you do the same thing. On the Bathysar Gold. Mr. Marine here. And if you can, while you're at it, add just a small overrun just a little bit into the crevice between the rim of the shoulder pad and the main part of the shoulder pad and it will help make that rim stand out just a little bit more. A little tricky to do and if you can't get it the first time that's okay I'm just going to show you 
another another thing that you can do. Using the very tip of the brush, just kind of run it. just in the crevice, the deepest part of the model. Help you give that little bit of shadow. In this one you have to be very, you have to be quite careful about uh, not having too much of the shade and not letting it you know run wild like I did like I did right there. But there are some parts uh, on the main part of the miniature, like the knees, right here. If you can get it to flow nice, it'll help add a nice little extra kick. To your mini. And of course, these techniques are not just for your, they're not just for Warhammer miniatures. You can use these, you can use these techniques with any miniature that you have for any gaming system or any board game. And if you find that you have overshaded for whatever reason, you can always go back to the color before. And fix it up. So, you know, don't be too hard on yourself if you make a make a light mistake. Mistakes happen, and that's how you learn. And that's how you you know get get your practice in, and that's how you get your.
that's where you, yeah, that's where you kind of learn what's going to work and what's going to work for you and what's not going to work. Yeah. Like I said, if you find that you've overshaded, you don't like how it looks, it's not a problem. Just go back. before or you know if you've misplaced a color you got a color where you don't want it to be Kind of going to the kind of going to the extreme. You don't have to go to this level if you don't want to. You know, this is how a person learns what looks good, what doesn't look good, how much is too much. No, I'm not sure. You can kind of see how I've kind of filled in the, or put some lines into the crevices of the marine to give us to give it a little bit of of difference. Again, you don't have to do absolutely everything. You can just pick out some pieces to give you that nice contrast, to give you that, you know. Look at the shadow. There. Nice and easy. We're going to take that. We're going to put that aside. There's not a lot really left to this guy. 
but we're going to keep trucking on. So now we're going to use Abaddon Black. And again, we're going to put that one that came with the kit aside. And we're going to use my open one. Give it a shake. We don't need a whole lot. Take a little bit. Put it on our palette. That's probably more than I need. A little bit of water to help it flow. And then we're just going to Again, also it gives us a chance to tidy up. The blue, blue and the gold over paints. If there are any. We're just going to kind of go all over the gun. There's parts that we really don't need. But at the same time, there are parts that we are going to need on the back side of the gun. Because it will be sticking out past the Marine and you'll be able to see it. are we're just going to leave that off to the side let that dry or we are going to need a lot of the black though is the uh, pouches and the gun that are on the back of the marine Now this just being a uh, a beginner paint kit, it doesn't necessarily give you all of the tools that you need for highlights and uh, shades and everything like that. I mean, there is there there's a way around it, of course. We can make it work. If you wish. I mean, 
as nice and careful and clean as you can be. Try not, try to not get any of the black on the blue that we've already painted. But if you do, you just go back and paint a little bit of blue on it. Clean up your the oh, clean up the overpaint the other way. There you go. Now, one of the fun parts that you can do is, if you see right here, uh, it's got kind of like a, I don't know how close, uh, it's got kind of a ribbed joint right here, and kind of a ribbed, uh, well, butt area right here. Uh, it's kind of an undersuit. I mean, it can be blue. I don't see why it couldn't be. But I've never made it when I do my own Marines. I've never made it the same color as my armor. Always painted it off. <laughs> uh, I've always painted it a version of a black. Usually it's an off black or a very, very dark gray. Just a neat little extra detail that you can that you can do. Since the starter brush is so thin, and there is a joint, a bit of a joint showing on the other leg. Try to do it too, and if I need to, I go back and clean it up. On the front here and here, there is some And again, you want to be as careful as you can. But if you have an oops, like I did there, just go back with the uh, with the blue later on and fix it up. No big deal. And there you are. Bing. You can kind of see, you know, the leg joint, the the butt, the pouches, gun, the front front of the legs there. They've all been painted black to just kind of show a difference and to break up that blue a little bit.
All right. Now comes the fun part. The part where you want to be as precise and clean as you can. We are going to take we are going to take the provided Corax white because I do not have that color. Shock. One of the colors I don't have. Give it a good good shake. We're going to crack it open. Corax white has been highly, highly pigmented to basically go over most base colors with very, very few coats. Um, and what we're going to use it for is on the shoulder pads, they have a raised omega sign and a raised upside uh, and a raised triangle. The triangle means heavy weapon team for, uh, as Warhammer 40,000 uh, prescribes it. And the Omega on this side means that it's part of the Ultramarines. And the Ultramarines is, and the Ultramarines are blue. They're also the poster boy for Warhammer 40,000. If it's a Space Marine, it's usually an Ultramarine. And what we're going to do is very carefully. There you are. Very carefully and very slowly. Color in the raised ultramarine logo or sigil. And again, if you overpaint or if the paint gets away from you. That's okay. You can just go back to the previous color. And fix it up. brush is developing some loose hairs which is kind of working my tip a little bit but that's all right twist your brush to make sure that you get keep that nice fine tip
going to have to go back. Fix up some of the overpaint. But that's okay. Because we know what to do. Just go back to the last color and cover it over. There we are. Boom. Just like that. Oh, next thing to upgrade is the camera so that I can actually get nice close up pictures. And then we go over to the other side. Still, again, using the Corax white. Gonna do a triangle twist it so we have as fine a tip as we can get. And for whatever reason, dry, uh, white seems to dry really fast. But again, not a huge deal. There we go. And that is pretty much the uh, the paint uh, the paint set for the. Uh, for Warhammer 40,000, which gives you, you know, 
a squad it will give you a squad of three in furnace marines from the ultramarines now if you don't want them to be from the ultramarines it'll take you a little bit of work but you can uh, file off scrape and file off the ultramarines insignia and um, put one on of your own go back to the drag blue pull a little bit out oh, we don't need much we're only tidying up especially on the ultramarine symbol There we are. Actually, you know what? We're going to do something else black because we can. And I don't like it. See, this is where personalization comes in. You can leave the whole backpack blue and be happy with it. I don't like that. Usually, I like to have these this part silver. Like a metal. But since... The, since a metal color doesn't come in this set, and I'm only using the brush and paints that are provided with this set, I can't have it the way I usually have it. But I'm going to go with black. That might not be how it's actually done, but that's how I like it done. So there we are. Done and done. Now we have one last thing to do, and then our marine is complete. The last thing to do is the base. So what we'll do first is we will push all the parts back together. Now, if you want to, you can glue all of them together after, you know, after the bits are painted and then they are guaranteed to never come apart but these are meant to be simple 
push together models that are not supposed to have glue. So, there he is. You're in your Ultramarines in Furnace Marine. And the last thing we have to do is the base. Now, they send along in the kit a uh, paint called a technical paint. And it's called Armageddon Dust. The reason why it's a technical paint is because it's got kind of a sand added to it. And lo and behold, <laughs> I have my own. So I'm not going to open the one that comes in the kit because I already have one and it's already open. So give it a shake, but it's going to be a little bit different. It's a lot thicker. As you can see, it's a little thicker and it's got kind of a you can see it's got kind of a grit to it. And the grit is the sand. No. One of the things that um, that you can use and is good to use is the Citadel uh, it's kind of a scoop tool and it's specifically made for for uh, the technical basing paints like these because you can scoop it out spread it around on the base and then use the smaller end here to get into the small crevices. But since this tool doesn't come in your kit, we're not going to use it. Again, we're going to do everything with the starter brush. We're going to do everything like the brush in the kit comes with. And you can use the starter brush to use your technical paints. So, you can kind of see how thick and goopy it is. We'll put it on, put it on the base. Wet your brush a little bit. And then you can start moving the paint around. It's a it's a little different of an it's a it's a little bit of a different animal than your regular paints. Which we'll learn quite quickly. How this one works. And if you find that what you scooped out wasn't enough, just <laughs> obviously go back and get some more. what I'm gonna have to do. I don't mean don't need much more. Just a little bit more.
And you just kind of keep working it as best as you can until you get it all over the base. Now this one takes a little longer to dry than other paints because of all the grit inside. But after it's done, you can go back and you can give it a wash of the uh, Agrax Urshade to give you just a, you know, to give you a little bit of uh, shade and shadow. And the last thing is the rim so you go back to the Everdon black usually you'd wait until the till tops finished or till, until your basing paint is done drying but we're gonna push it a little bit And then you just paint the rim of your marine. And again, like I said, usually you'd wait until everything is dry and then go back. And paint it up. Today, we're going to push it a little bit. And there we are. One Marine painted with the Warhammer 40,000 paint and starter set well paint set i shouldn't say starter because it's not really a starter but it does give you an idea of how to paint your miniatures it does you know gives you a bit of a guide on the back on what to, on where the paints go and how the paints go and Try and, keep, try and keep that plastic tap on. There we are. So, if you look right here, it does give you a bit of a paint guide on, you know, on where the paints go it shows you that the rim is black and that you have uh you know what basic materials and it tells you what colors it goes it gives you the instructions on how you build your marines so all in all i think it's a really neat little box i mean it comes with six paints to get you on your way and uh it gives you everything that you kind of need to start your journey into warhammer 40,000 and like i said there is uh, an identical box uh for warhammer age of sigmar different models 
maybe some different paints, but basically same, same. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I kind of like this little box. Not exactly my paint scheme, uh, for, for my, for my Marines, but, you know, what, what can you do? You know, you, you kind of paint with what you got, and these guys are the Ultramarines, like I said, they're the poster boys for Warhammer 40,000, if you look at most of the artwork, and most of the stuff that is for Warhammer 40,000, you'll see that it's the Ultramarines. Uh, yeah. It, uh, there he is. The boy in blue. All done. So, I know we've come a little over. But that's okay. It's only a minute or two. So, in the meantime, I would like you please to be safe and to stay safe. Most of all, paint safe. Remember, use a different cup for your paint water. Don't drink it. And until next time, we'll see you in the workshop.